Hey, this is Kay in the Speak Up, Don't Shut Up, HD Sucks. May is Huntington's Disease Awareness Month, and today we're going to discuss the softer sides of Huntington's disease. Those are the emotion slash behaviors and conditioning slash thinking symptoms. And I'm here with Bill Hart, and he's going to explain this to us. Hi. Thank you, uh, Kay, for the welcome. Um, this is perhaps one of the most um, um, most useful uh, topics that I feel uh, people with Huntington's can uh, understand and their uh, spouses and their families too. <clears throat> as, as you know, um, HD can be a destructive condition uh, because it may lead to behavioral problems that damage social and family relationships. It is, however, the disease and not the person that is at fault. People with HD are not being deliberately thoughtless, awkward, and uncaring. It's a disease that gives rise to changes in behavior over which the person with HD has absolutely no control. There are not easy answers to behavioral problems as everybody is different. However, understanding why people with Huntington's disease and juvenile behave in the way that they do is important since it may provide clues to circumventing problems and getting along better with each other. <clears throat> At the very best, understanding behavior is a step towards better understanding the person with Huntington's, placing families and carers in a better position to provide optimum support and the highest quality of care possible. Now, I want to talk about um, some barriers um, because, you know, it's, it's interesting thinking back, you know, why haven't we uh, really uh, talked about these a bunch in the past? Um, why aren't the major uh, organizations over Huntington's disease uh, doing any clinical uh, research studies into these symptoms? Um, you know, it, it's, um, <clears throat> it's like when you mention Huntington's, uh, everybody goes, oh, yeah, Korea. A and it's like, well, yeah, that's the hallmark, but it's not the symptom that uh, gets you divorced or, or gets you fired from work or, uh, you know, gets your family hating you. So here are some of the barriers that I came up with. Uh, how can you be sure that your loved one wasn't already becoming a drug addict, alcoholic, compulsive gambler, cheater, or sexually promiscuous before they started HD symptoms? How can you be sure that the questionable behaviors or actions weren't caused from the medications that they're taking or an interaction between their medications? Some of the side effects of medications read like the softer symptoms of Huntington's themselves. How can you tell how much of your loved one's behaviors and actions they can actually control and how much they can't? Current and updated information on the sequelae of softer symptoms of Huntington's is just not floating around all over the place like it should to help the most people possible. How do you know when your loved one is accountable for their behavior and actions and when they're not? Many were religious before, and shouldn't their conscience or moral compass have prevented them from doing the questionable things that they've done? Notwithstanding all of these questions, what tools, if any, are there out there that can provide spouses, loved ones, friends, religious leaders, policemen, lawyers, and judges with enough compelling facts to prove beyond reasonable doubt that the behaviors and actions were actually HD affected and when they started. Not knowing how much of their questionable behavior actions can be attributable to HD and how much can be attributed to non-HD behavior and or actions and reactions. 
because the PhD or person with Huntington's disease still looks good physically, how much of their soft, softer symptoms can actually be attributed to HD? How much of their questionable behavior actions are due to a combination of HD symptoms, the current medications they're on, and non-HD affected behavior and or actions and reactions? So these are all questions that I've come up with to help everybody better understand uh, why it's so important that we're talking about this. Um, and one of the other things is, is um, I mentioned about the side effects of, of medication. I went ahead and looked up uh, just an, uh, a simple SSRI antidepressant, and um, here is its uh, potential side effects. Now, this is from an SSRI, um, uh, once again, that's uh, primarily it was used for depression. Uh, new or worsening depression, think about harming or killing yourself. Extreme worry, feeling agitated, panic attacks, difficulty falling or staying asleep, aggressive behavior, irritability, acting without thinking, frenzied abnormal excitement, seeing things and hearing voices that don't exist, or in other words, hallucinating, confusion, nervousness, weakness changes in sex drive and ability, and difficulty concentrating, <clears throat> forgetfulness, executive tiredness, acting on dangerous impulses, acting aggressive or violent, um, may affect your ability to make decisions. Now, don't those sound exactly like uh, a dozen or more of your HD uh, softer symptoms. It, it sure does. And so now I want to um, talk a little bit about <clears throat> um, how do we know? How do you know that uh, your loved one, uh, that whatever behavior they're having is actually HD related and that it's not? Um, you know, related to the medications that they're on. It's not related to their personalities, uh, things like this. I've come up with um, a really good standard, and I call this um, I call this uh, the first tool to identify the root causes of barriers is the measuring stick that says uncharacteristic. Okay, now let me give you a couple of examples. <clears throat> and then we'll get into the uh, actual symptoms, but I think it's really important that everybody kind of get an idea of how they can tell. Um, let's say your loved one was caught stealing. <clears throat> okay, let's use the uncharacteristic measuring stick. Is the behavior action in question uncharacteristic of prior behavior actions, okay? Has your loved one never stolen? And now all of a sudden, they get stealing from a department store, um, not only stealing, but stealing with the clerk right in front of them, because that's what people with Huntington's do. So if it is uncharacteristic behavior, then it's probably HD-affected behavior. Um, how about gambling? Uh, is the behavior action in question uncharacteristic of prior behavior and actions? Uh, so has the person, uh, the person is gambling now, they ran up a lot of debt, uh, the family's going to be really hurting, and so is this something <clears throat> that was um, HD-affected behavior? Or is it just simply uh, the person? And so 
if you can say that this behavior was uncharacteristic from their prior to behaviors, then it's probably HD affected behavior. If it's not, you really don't know, but I'll be able to, I'll tell you how you can get around that too. Uh, here's another one. Um, impulsiveness uh, is the behavior or action in question. Impulsiveness uncharacteristic of prior behaviors and actions. And let me do another one. How about forgetfulness? Um, is forgetfulness uh, an uncharacteristic behavior of your loved one? For myself, I never forgot where I put my keys. I never forgot. Some people may uh, have forgotten their whole lives where they put the keys. So for me, you could say, well, that's uncharacteristic behavior for Phil, and it's not for someone else because they've always done it. it still may, could be an HD symptom of forgetfulness, but with the other person who's done it before, you really can't tell. And so how do you kind of like um, have the, um, uh, you know, ha have a person judge and say, um, well, th this, this is really HD behavior. <clears throat> um, I believe the most important tool we have right now to determine how much of a loved one's behavior and actions are and were HD affected or not is the neuropsychological exam. I have used these hundreds of times over the years to help persons with Huntington's get out of trouble and to help families understand how much their loved one is being adversely affected by the softer symptoms of Huntington's. Uh, now the neurological evaluation is a comprehensive assessment of cognitive and behavioral functions using a set of standardized tests and procedures. Various mental functions are systematically tested, including but not limited to intelligence, problem solving, uh, conceptualization, planning and organization, attention, memory and learning, language, academic skills, perceptual and motor abilities, and emotions, behavior, and personality. And as you can see, this uh, really uh, really test if your loved one is arrested or uh, you know terminated from work for something and you you can't tell if it's you know uncharacteristic uh, behaviors and actions uh, then you can always have a neuropsychological exam done the problem is it usually has to be ordered by a psychologist or psychiatrist and uh, if you don't have insurance it could cost some money, but um, you know, don't worry about that. Uh, you know, because oftentimes there's others who will um, who will help you pay for that. Uh, but it's it's the best way, um, you know, without question, to know um, for sure uh, that the behavior that you're experiencing is HD related. Okay, the first softer symptom I want to talk about is um, apathy. And uh, Kay has one of my papers uh, that she put out last week. Um, and it has not only uh, the majority or the most, I feel, important softer symptoms on it, but I have also gone to great lengths um, and love to put uh, references at the bottom so that if you if your loved one is in trouble uh, it'll help you you can give it to the court court will accept it because it has references to uh, the different symptoms that your loved one may be experiencing so please um, you know use this and um, it will truly help you. Okay, the first one is apathy. Uh, apathy is common in HD, um, probably related to frontal lobe dysfunction. Apathetic patients become 
unmotivated and uninterested in their surroundings. They lose uh, enthusiasm and spontaneity. Um, apathetic patients will deny being sad, but in distinguishing the two, it is important to ask not only about the patient's mood of depressive symptoms, but uh, have, are they experiencing any sleeping and eating patterns, feelings of guilt, and suicidal thoughts too. Um, continuing, uh, this says, our results indicate that apathy and depression are separable. And a lot of people think that they are combined, that uh, they are related to each other. However, this one study, our results indicate that apathy and depression are separable and independent behavioral dimensions in Huntington's. With apathy and Huntington's disease related to the neurodegeneration and connected to cognitive dysfunction and functional decline. Apathy and depression are common neuropsychiatric features of Huntington's disease. One more, apathy is defined as diminished motivational and attributable to decreased level of consciousness, cognitive impairment, and emotional distress. In contrast, depression involves consider emotional distress uh, evidenced by tearfulness, sadness, anxiety, agitation, insomnia, anorexia, feelings of worthlessness, and hopelessness. Um, one study uh, undertook the, release, the relationship of three dimensions of behavioral change, apathy, depression, and irritability, uh, measured by the Problem Behavior Assessment Scale in England. Um, and the apathy subscale was highly correlated with both cognitive and motor impairment. Uh, the irritability and depression subscales were not. Um, so under the apathy subscale, these are the other symptoms that this study came up with that were related to apathy. Reduced activity, lack of perseverance, lack of self-esteem, emotional blunting, reducing self-care, impaired quality of work, lack of initiative, and impulsivity and impaired judgment. So these are, this is very, very important to realize that, you know, as, you know, we try to lump some of these uh, behaviors together and actually uh, these were determined to happen uh, primarily uh, when there was apathy, apraxia, impaired ability to plan, initiate, or perform certain purposeful actions. Um, A lot of people think that this is caused by difficulty with the estimation of time. Uh, spouses often complain that their once punctual spouse has become frequently late and misestimates how long activities take. Um, three or four characteristics or clinical features, loss of the ability to control body movements, loss of the ability to think and act quickly. Isn't that interesting? Act quickly. Uh, you could ask a person with Huntington's a question uh, in the later stages, and um, they may not answer your question until tomorrow. Okay, <laughs> so uh, I think the key there is that you know uh, you lose the ability to act quickly uh, and less able to judge how much time uh, has elapsed. Uh, patients also exhibit poor social judgment and may be irritable and aggressive. And now it's interesting to note that vocational rehabilitation, uh, which is where you can go if you've lost your current job, 
then vocational rehabilitation will train you for a new job. But with Huntington's, it just doesn't work because uh, the ability of the person with Huntington's uh, to learn new tasks is very poor. And then, of course, their short-term memory is also very poor. Uh, the next uh, softer symptom is difficulty maintaining focus and attention. Uh, memory frequently is not impaired until late in the disease, but attention, judgment, and executive functions may be seriously deficient at an early stage. Abilities such as organization, regulation, and perception are affected uh, very rapidly in the disease. In persons with Huntington's, simple attention often remains intact. In contrast, sustained or complex types of attention become impaired in Huntington's. For example, most persons with HD will experience difficulty with what is called divided attention or the capability to do two things at once. Basically, what this means is that one of the symptoms with attention, um, the softer symptoms, the individual, uh, I've added another uh, definition there, uh, you can't multitask anymore. You may have been able to be on the phone and the computer and driving the car before, um, but when Huntington's strikes, uh, you just can't multitask anymore. Um, along with perseveration, the Huntington's patient also experiences difficulty maintaining a topic conversation. Again, listener cueing, refocusing on the topic, and letting the individuals know when they have gone off topic can help your loved one participate in a conversation as long as it is done with sensitivity to avoid um, future frustration. Um, and of course, um, minimizing distraction helps with attention too. Uh, I used to have a really good friend, Artie, maybe some of you knew her, um, but anyway, she could not walk close to a casino because all of the bells and uh, everything else going off, uh, she'd just go berserk. And she couldn't think, she couldn't function, she'd literally have to run away. The next symptom I'd like to talk about is lack of awareness. <clears throat> this is a really, really serious one. Um, several studies have suggested that cognitive and behavioral impairments are greater sources of impairment of functioning than the movement disorder in persons with Huntington's, both in the workplace and at home. And I say amen to that. In addition, family members most often report that placement outside the home is initiated because of cognitive and behavioral problems rather than chorea. Um, so, uh, lack of awareness. The person doesn't know. I need to take a little sip of something. The person with Huntington's Bill? doesn't know, yes. You're doing good. Okay, thank you. Uh, the person with Huntington's doesn't know that they're not doing things as quickly and as efficiently as they used to, uh, and then denying it. Uh, the lack of awareness, uh, this, it's, this is, taken from you and lack of awareness i think early on in the disease is a little easier uh to accept 
because you don't realize that someone can look in the mirror and say, I don't have Korea, for example. Um, whereas at the end, um, you know, the, the lack of awareness also helps you, um, you know, if you're unable to walk anymore and stuff like that. So it can be kind of a two-edged sword, uh, a godsend, uh, because you don't know the things. But then also I've encountered lots and lots of people who say I'm not depressed. I'm not, uh, I don't have Korea, so I'm not going to take any medicine. And so you have to kind of sneak it in their, their coffee each day. Um, quality of performance uh, is not uncommon in people with Huntington's disease to carry out everyday tasks less efficiently than before. The poor quality of performance on tasks may be a source of irritation to patients. Families who may perceive the sufferer as being uh, slapdash or not bothered, uh, it is not the case that the patient is simply not trying, nor will your loved one uh, immediately begin to change things if you tell them, you know what, you're just not trying. And, and Dr. Chu gave a, a really excellent explanation of this before. You know, we see people um, <clears throat> maybe who have broken their arms and they're, they have a cast and a sling on. And as they're maybe working outside in the yard, we would never imagine or think to come up to them and say, you know what, if you want to get that job done quicker, you need to work harder. No, we would never do that. They'd probably clobber us. But yet with Huntington's, because of the slowness and because of the other problems with the disease, People just don't think, and they say, well, all you have to do is try harder, you know, and, oh, that just frustrates the person with Huntington's, or if they're experiencing unawareness, it'll just go right over their head. Now, uh, the patients, um, it looks like the patient lacks initiative. Uh, and it says, I love this because it says uh, other family members may have to act as a stimulator. And um, when I was first symptomatic, I had a, um, uh, my youngest adopted daughter, <clears throat> Katie, I wouldn't go out and mow the yard. But if Katie came up to me, took my hand and says, Dad? Let me help you mow the yard. <clears throat> you know what? Um, I was perfectly okay with that. I didn't think of it to begin with, you know, because of the unawareness and stuff like that. But, you know, you can often have family members, uh, you know, be the kind of external spark, uh, you know, to jumpstart your loved one to get them to actually hey, you know, let's, let's go to the store and, and get ice cream, you know. Uh, so just remember that. Uh, get them involved. And um, that'll really help if, they'll, if you will jumpstart uh, them uh, instead of just getting upset and throwing in the towel. Okay, loss of cognitive speed and processing. Um, the executive functions, the ability such as organization, regulation, and perception uh, can affect performance in many cognitive areas, including speed, reasoning, planning, judgment, decision-making, emotional engagement, perseveration, impulse control, temper control, perception, awareness, attention, language, learning, memory, and timing. Wow. How many of your loved ones have a handful of those that they're fighting with uh, to look normal? Uh, in addition, family members most often report that, oh, okay, um, 
the type of memory impairments found in HD are mostly the difficulties of learning new information and retrieving acquired information. Isn't that interesting? Let me repeat that again. Difficulty in learning new information and in retrieving information that's already gone into your brain. Problems occur in getting information in and out due to the slowed speed of processing and poor organization of information, once again caused by uh, the cell death in the caudate nucleus. Uh, so yes, the cognitive speed and processing goes down. Uh, you know, sometimes you ask a question or make a statement and the words come and everything works together and that question or that statement is a success and other times um, you just do searching in your mind and it just is there as a caregiver it's important to understand that the person has no control over this they are not being stubborn and making a conscious choice not to remember or repeat a task. It is the degenerative, unpredictable nature of Huntington's that is the root of this problem. Um, there are three characteristic clinical features, loss of the ability to control bodily movements, loss of ability to think and act quickly, to learn and to remember, and apathy and severe depression. Uh, communication cognition, what we say and the thought process needed to plan what we say and speech pronunciation, how we say it, are all affected by Huntington's disease. And as we mentioned before, sometimes, you know, everything will line up correctly and you'll make an intelligible request or sentence and other times. Um, it just isn't going to happen. Cognitive and language skills are also greatly affected. Uh, these deficits can include difficulty beginning a conversation. Okay, remember this. Difficulty beginning a conversation. If your loved one is sitting over there on the couch or kitchen table, not saying anything, remember, they have difficulty beginning a conversation. Uh, also, lack of spontaneity in communication. Uh, in other words, you know, you can change from one subject to another. Uh, they have difficulty putting thoughts into words. And the number of words that are available to them are reduced limited ability to respond within a conversation, specific word finding difficulties, difficulty understanding complex information, slow response time, impaired skills in reading and writing, ranging from physical disabilities because of like the uh, chorea or because of the rigidity if you have juvenile Huntington's, um, but anyway, physical difficulties to comprehension difficulties and problems learning new information and new skills and reduced short-term memory make it very, very complicated um, for your loved one who has Huntington's uh, to uh, communicate. Okay, another symptom, uh, complaining, constantly finding fault. Um, commonly, people with HD make extra demands on their partners. These demands may be quite inappropriate as to the time and place and, and can be uh, very exhausting for the partner. Uh, Gaining reassurance through physical closeness and therefore sex is uh, an overpowering need that sometimes pits uh, your loved one 
against you. And um, I, I have an, another uh, comparison I'd like to make. A, a lot of people will liken this time in the disease of when they go from lover to mother, okay? Go from lover to mother, father, or, or lover to father. Uh, do you see what I mean? Where uh, the you just, their person no longer is attractive to you. They're making all kinds of additional demands that are hard to handle. And, um, and so, you know, it, it finally comes to the thing where you are more their uh, caregiver than you are the spouse. And this hurts. This hurts you as the caregiver. It also hurts uh, the person with Huntington's as they uh, recognize this and see this as just another way of losing more of their independence. They've already lost the ability to drive. They've lost the ability to work. They've lost the ability to, you know, to uh, pretty much to function in social groups and that. And now this very important, uh, you know, sensual piece, uh, they lose the ability um, to have meaningful sex again too. Um, and it's truly, truly a sad time and, and just one more of the, uh, you know, many things of independence uh, that uh, we as persons with Huntington's uh, lose. Uh, another softer symptom is problems comprehending others' words. Communication or the transfer of information from one person to another requires a complex integration of thought, muscle control, and breathing. HD impairs, you got it, all three of these functions. There are two main aspects to communicating, getting the information in and understanding it, and getting the information out or talking. Both of these aspects are impaired by HD. Uh, the most prominent language difficulties are speaking clearly or articulation, starting a conversation and organize what's coming in and going out. And I know because we did a study of this with the um, University of Arizona and also Arizona State University uh, with speech uh, that the diaphragm is uh, almost always um, tremendously affected and uh, not effective uh, with Huntington's. And the diaphragm is what, um, you know, it's what supports you so that your speech is heard. And so, but when your diaphragm goes, uh, you know, that's when people, you can barely hear them. You can barely hear them. Um, but also, you know, realize that people with Huntington's um, have a very hard time organizing the outgoing and incoming language, uh, resulting in a lot of miscommunication. So if you're a loved one, uh, please, please uh, be aware of that. Um, hold on just a sec. The Huntington's uh, patient, of course, may require extra time to make himself or herself understood and uh, to formulate thoughts and ideas and express them. And as I mentioned, uh, you know, kind of jokingly before that, you know, you may ask someone with Huntington's and a uh, question and, you know, they may not answer. <clears throat> um, but they may answer the next day or they may answer four or five hours later 
because that's the time that it took to go in, be understood, uh, formulate an answer, and then answer. Um, and one other thing too, if I can, this may be a good time to bring this up too. When you're, um, when you're helping those with Huntington's, please remember to do because you know the loss of short-term memory and and some of the other things that we've talked about please remember that uh, do not ask them what would you like for dinner oh my gosh that will go in and swirl around and may not ever come out however if you ask them just a couple of short questions, would you like hot dogs for dinner or would you like fish and chips for dinner tonight? You see what I mean? The same way when you're helping them get dressed, uh, would, you, would you rather wear uh, this blue dress or would you rather wear this red dress? Okay. Those are very easy questions and they can answer them. Not, uh, please look in your closet and tell me what you'd like to wear tonight. Boy, that is not going to happen on a um, quick basis. Um, too often, people with Huntington's disease are dismissed as not understanding anything because they cannot communicate verbally. With time and effort, you may well discover that you have underestimated how alert and aware the nonverbal patient is. And please remember that. Concentrating. Increased difficulty concentrating. Concentration on intellectual tasks becomes increasingly difficult. Uh, this is in one of the uh, books, and it's kind of interesting that they said it like this. They said they can't concentrate and finish anything. They keep moving around and changing things. They can't attempt a conversation for more than a short period of time. They want to go on to something else. They can't plan. They're incapable of planning ahead. And of course, loss of attention uh, and poor concentration is part of the reason. Uh, because that darn old HD also affects the ability of the brain to understand, organize, and retain. Changes in cognition or the ability to think can be an initial indicator of Huntington's. And Huntington's, as we know, progressively affects cognitive functions such as organizing and prioritizing. Um, now, one of the other things <clears throat> that adversely affects everybody is uh, impaired decision making or being decisionally impaired. Uh, because the disease affects the frontal lobes of the brain, planning ability, judgment, and decision-making are affected. Uh, and as I mentioned, you know, um, the other day when we talked, you know, that uh, if you get arrested wrongfully for looking like you're intoxicated and, and your gait uh, or your walk is kind of staggering and your speech is also a uh, little staggering, um, you know, and, and somebody arrests you, uh, you know, that's not the time to uh, slug the police officer. And yet uh, those with Huntington's have done that uh, many, many times. and. Um, so just remember that you know impaired decision making is um, one of the symptoms. Uh, reasoning and judgment skills are also impaired. Uh, breaking down activities into small steps helps to compensate for this. Reducing demands and creating a predictable environment. 
may be ongoing uh, coping strategies. Um, intoxicated demeanor, um, unsteady gait and involuntary movements, slurred speech and intoxicated demeanor, uh, misarticulation. Okay, we haven't talked about this yet. Motor speech impairments are quite typical in HD. Persons with HD have uh, even been accused of being drunk due to their sluggish speech articulation. Lack of motor coordination also causes difficulties with enunciation and breath control, as I mentioned the diaphragm earlier, for underlying speech. Um, and so I hope that um, I've ab I'm about halfway through, Kay, but I hope that, um, you know, this has helped others uh, really think about their, uh, their loved ones and how to help them the most. Um, let me read you just uh, one other one quickly, uh, which is, uh, which of the sequelae of softer symptoms may have adversely affected this PhD's behavior when he molested his nine-year-old daughter? Okay, A, loss of inhibitions, B, loss of consequential or forward thinking, C, hypersexuality, D, impulsivity, E, narcissistic or self-centered behavior, F, impaired judgment and reasoning, or G, all of the above. 